Any other questions? Then we move ahead with our next participant. Ulrich Hoffman will present This is Christmas, ESP32 right. so Force it's, Station. So it's uh, Christmas is uh, approaching very soon. And so I put my uh, Christmas hat on. And then let's uh, see, we can share uh, my desktop and uh, see what um, surprises are there. So it's the uh, ESP32 Force Station. And uh, so nothing that is originally by me. So let's have a look at uh, what's going on. I, um, I would like to talk about uh, combining the results from several projects. Many people contributed to this and did lots of the nitty gritty details and the work uh, just collected things and uh, did a mix up. And uh, the result is the uh, ESP32 fourth uh, uh, station that uh, comes out of it. So we will have a look at that. And I will then uh, give a short demo of uh, what we can do with this. Um, so it's the idea of having a standalone computer and uh, let's see how we can com combine different things that uh, others did. So there is this great ESP32 library called FabGL uh, that uh, uses IO pins of the ESP32 to actually uh, move them so fast that uh, they can uh, create uh, VGA signals. And uh, this means an emulation, you can go ahead, use the FabGL library and um, uh, try things out and uh, emulate other computers and do VGA input and PS2 keyboard input and things like, like this. Um, Brad uh, uh, told us a lot about ESP32 force. So that's one of the projects going on and uh, uh, actually, the uh, Chinese uh, company LilyGo took uh, the idea uh, of uh, in a ESP32 with uh, a VGA output um, and build a board that uh, can be easily be purchased, uh, the uh, VGA32 board, TTGO and VGA32. And I'm very happy that Dimitri in one of his earlier talks, I think it's about two years ago or so, uh, mentioned about uh, mentioned this board and uh, told us about it. Um, so this uh, was uh, inspiration for me to have a look at it, and uh, uh, then also let some force programs run it and uh, make use of the uh, VGA output and the keyboard input. And then there's Thingiverse where you can go ahead and uh, browse for any kind of 3D printed uh, stuff. And if you look, then you can see there are quite a lot of people that build cases for the uh, VGA32 uh, computer. And so, um, yeah, let's, uh, uh, I, I just collected uh, some links and uh, view of the, uh, uh, of the appropriate pages. So the FabGL library comes with a huge amount of demo programs. Uh, so you can build a CPM system uh, from it uh, and run your old CPM programs. Um, you can make it a uh, Pac-Man station. Uh, you can even with some extension, you can make it a very slow PC. Um, and uh, it can also be a terminal. Uh, and uh, that, that means it's, it's a uh, VT100 terminal that um, uh, uh, connects with a serial line to uh, some other computer and um, uh, will do a display on the VGA screen and um, uh, use uh, the PS2 port to connect uh, a keyboard. And then you just have a VT100 terminal. Um, that means um, uh, you can just uh, type on the keyboard. Um, the keystrokes are transmitted via serial line and whatever comes from the computer will be interpreted with escape sequences and um, color and, and what have you. Sorry, um, on the, um, uh, uh, in the terminal program and then uh, will be displayed on, on the computer. So that's uh, quite nice. And uh, I encourage you to have a look at this. Uh, so lots of hours of fun uh, involved in FabGL and trying this out and uh, 
um, uh, using uh, inappropriate hardware to do that. Um, yeah, next ESP32. Uh, well, there's nothing I can tell you about new things. Uh, 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 Brad is uh, the one uh, uh, who's developing this and adds uh, amazing things every time. Uh, he, we hear about uh, it, um, uh, the latest thing being a, an assembler for the Transilica or the RISC-V uh, uh, processors, um, the two flavors of ESP32 that we encounter, so that you eventually can do very highly optimized uh, words in machine code of these processors. Mm, I have been using a slightly older version. It's a 703, if I remember correctly, um, that, that I'm uh, ported uh, uh, using FabGL. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, an update to a newer version should be possible. So, and then uh, the guys at LilyGo took the idea uh, of FabGL and created a hardware that is the TTGO VGA32. And here we see some pictures uh, of it. And I have uh, one of the boards here. Um, yeah, and uh, it's really small, uh, like a match box, something like this. And um, so it has an ESP32 and it's some uh, RAM. Uh, it has a USB port that we can see here. Uh, so you can use it as an ordinary ESP32 development board. Of course, it has Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth, and it has an audio output. So if you want to run an emulated game on it, it can also do the, uh, the sound appropriately. And it has an SD card slot here so that uh, you can add more memory, uh, mass storage memory, if you want to. And it has two connectors. Uh, that are actually VGA, uh, that are actually PS2 keyboard input and PS2 mouse. And on the other side, you have a VGA um, a connector that uh, you'll just connect to your monitor and it will display whatever is necessary. So if you want to go to the uh, website of uh, LilyGo and have a look at it, here's some more uh, 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 breakdown of uh, what the capabilities of these little boards are. So that's really amazing. There is also some limited capability um, uh, at this uh, lower part where you have yet another serial line. So you have one serial line that is uh, 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 transmitted via uh, USB uh, so that, that you normally can connect it and you can program it like in Arduino uh, yeah, uh, in, in the ESP mode. Uh, so it can run ESP32 for us but then uh, communicating over the serial line. And we have this GPIO headers, very limited, uh, uh, and um, a pair of them is also RXTX. So if you want to have a 3.3 volt additional serial line where you con would connect this uh, system in a terminal mode, um, then that's the way where you, you would go. So some voltage converters and then connect to whatever computer you want and then run the terminal program on it um, and you have a very cheap, simple terminal. Right, and um, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. Let me see, switch to the next. And the next thing is uh, the case. So you can go there and uh, well, yeah, 3D print a small case, or if you prefer another color, uh, yeah, then you can just go ahead and um, uh, print it. And uh, the board fits nicely in that case. Uh, showing just uh, uh, the PS2, uh, the, the PS2 keyboard and uh, the VGA on the other side. And um, so, um, yeah, that's uh, what you can do. So, uh, which means we end up with uh, having uh, 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 these three uh, projects combined uh, to build the uh, ESP32 4 station. Um, the case around it, uh, then the hardware inside FabGL as uh, the, the one that does the VGA output and ESP32 that gives us the programming environment. We connect the PS2 keyboard to it and a VGA uh, output, and we could uh, do some serial or USB communication to an additional device. Of course, because this is an ESP32, it can do Wi-Fi and it can do Bluetooth. So that's um, uh, quite nice for uh, a small computer that is just the case of a matchbox. 
Yeah, and uh, so which means um, yeah, here are some photos um, yeah of the board um, uh, being not just inserted in the case and then um, the uh, computer connected uh, with PS2 on one side and uh, VGA on the other side uh, running ESP32 because the trick is, well, uh, ESP32 does key and emit and type and key question it normally does it on the serial line. And if you revert it uh, to the FabGL uh, functionality that would normally read from the serial line, but you drop the serial line, you write uh, ESP32 for words that would just go ahead and um, um, use the FabGA terminal output to display something on VGA and uh, read the keyboard and um, uh, give it uh, to the FOSS system as key. Um, you end up with a force computer, the ESP 32 force station. Uh, as you can see, uh, PS2, old PS2 uh, keyboard and some VGA monitor. And there you go. And uh, since uh, there's a flash file system in ESP 32 force, you have a small standalone computer with some limited um, uh, capabilities. So let's have a look at uh, what's going on. Now I want to do this presentation. I could point my camera to the VGA monitor that you just saw, um, but uh, I thought I'd do some clever video stuff tricks. So I captured the VGA output um, uh, with a converter that uh, produces HDMI output. And then uh, I have an adapter that can use HDMI and present it to me as a web camera. And the web camera is actually here. And so uh, you see something that looks like a terminal, but it's actually the video capture of the device, what you would normally see on the monitor. And if I type on my laptop, nothing will happen. Uh, yeah, because it's this keyboard, uh, the, the, this keyboard that we just saw that I need to do because I just uh, um, yeah capture the video, but the um, uh, but the keyboard and uh, the video is the, the original thing. So here you see the uh, ESP32 force, and we can just uh, do a buy. Let's see, cross fingers that the video adapter will actually come back. No, it won't. Yeah, it does. Um, so uh, this is when you switch it on, uh, eventually after some initialization, it will come uh, back and uh, give you the appropriate prompt. And then you can just go ahead and do things. Um, as I said, it has um, um, uh, also a, uh, a SPIF memory, a flash memory uh, as mass storage uh, and uh, Brad provided a, uh, um, uh, an editor and a block interface. So you can just go ahead and do one load and it would interpret this, define the word high and uh, do the load and so on. Um, and uh, then there are some uh, other uh, uh, programs that we can see. Let me see. Or is probably something that uh, that might be interesting. Escape sequences to do some uh, color stuff or uh, some uh, demonstration program that uh, we, we can use. And uh, what we can make uh, is uh, 270 through, like in the old days. Uh, and uh, well, maybe don't mistype like this. And you see, well, it's not slow. It just, uh, uh, yeah, if you think about a floppy system at some uh, earlier times, uh, loading 15 screens was quite a while. This is well, not especially fast. So if you have a force engine uh, that does it, it's probably faster, but uh, it's not bad uh, at all. And then uh, you can, for example, just um, do a Christmas tree. Um, and you see it's, uh, it's a color computer, nice. Uh, and uh, it can do things. And uh, the program actually is uh, something that I did for the Bitcanona uh, uh, LED array for a, a couple of whiles ago, uh, a couple of years ago. And um, it's supposed to also show candles and it's supposed to also show uh, candle, the light of the candle and the candle light is supposed to flicker. Um, uh, if I do this here uh, in the in the process of porting, uh, uh, I use the simulator uh, uh, that 
red provides for the ESP32 as well. It works in the simulator and I will not show it because it's not the real thing. I can show uh, what, what it does uh, right now. Um, and be, because it will just go nuts and uh, the, the, the tree will burn, uh, we cross fingers that this wouldn't happen with your Christmas tree uh, uh, during Christmas. Um, so this obviously needs uh, some debugging, uh, but to give you an impression of how it would look like uh, uh, and how, how it was on the Bitcanona, um, we can uh, have a look here and uh, let's see, I probably shared without, um, without uh, enabling sound. Um, so I redo this so that uh, we all can enjoy uh, this. Uh, so let's move this. Yeah, let's move this in the center and then uh, here we go. Ah. Yeah, so you get the idea. Uh, and um, yeah, obviously it's nice uh, to have this uh, running on the ESP32 force station as well. And uh, then of course, uh, yeah, as we saw about earlier computer games, uh, that's uh, probably a good platform to do this uh, there as well. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, uh, what I wanted to talk about today. So uh, if you uh, would like to have a computer like this uh, on your own as well, it can easily be attached even to the back of the, uh, uh, to the VGA monitor and you want to play around with it. Yeah, just uh, uh, order some uh, LilyGo TTGo uh, VGA32 boards and uh, I would be happy to help you with flashing the board and uh, bring it up uh, uh, to operation. So. Amazing, Ulrich, Thank fantastic. This is something that we uh, need to bear in mind uh, programming such um, demonstration like Ulrich did in C++ or in Arduino would take, would take a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And Ulrich did this in only a couple of words. This is where force shines. the value of experience. Yeah, and there's this porting experience. Uh, yeah, I, I learned about that uh, uh, you can have eight bit colors and you can have uh, only 16 colors and that the escape sequences uh, are different. So it's probably that, that my tree uh, burned uh, is probably has something to do with a different kind of uh, escape sequences that you need to use. Anyway, yeah. So uh, interesting. Do you have any questions? I will do some benchmarks uh, so that we uh, know how fast it actually is. And um, yeah. Can we upload this later to the different GitHubs we have yeah. of the group and sure. the sp 32 force uh, GitHub, Ulrich? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure, we can do that.